What's going on everybody? It's your boy Cesar. I'm going to blow my face up here real quick because I want to talk about a couple things. So we're going to talk about Dogecoin today. I like Dogecoin a lot. I used to not like Dogecoin. I'm going to label off three reasons why I like Dogecoin. First and foremost, it's probably, if, if not Bitcoin, Dogecoin, I, th I think Bitcoin's more decentralized, but Dogecoin is second to that in the most decentralized asset, cryptocurrency, whatever on the planet. That's including dollars, that's including cryptos. Of course, dollars are going to be centralized. But out of any crypto out there, the whole point of cryptocurrency, Dogecoin is the most decentralized. Maybe actually Bitcoin's more decentralized, but Dogecoin's the most decentralized after that. And the owner that made Dogecoin, he sold all his Dogecoin before this last big run-up even happened. He, he didn't own it. It's very, it's, I mean, tell, tell me that that's not decentralized. Tell me how many founders and owners of other cryptos haven't sold all their bags. I mean, you know, it was a joke coin. He sold all his stuff because, like, he just made a joke coin, whatever. People didn't take it seriously. That actually gave it a very big advantage in becoming decentralized, the whole point of crypto. So, one, it's decentralized. Don't listen to all these media BS stories that tell you that it's very centralized. Yeah, there's Dogecoin whales. Yes, Robinhood probably owns a large bit because they're one of the only, like, or they were one of the first exchanges that offered it, you know, and that was one of the main currencies that offered. So, you know, but another thing, too, Besides, besides the fact that Robinhood owns some, let's talk, let's talk about the billionaires that advocate for Dogecoin. Robinhood, Vlad Thurmer, the founder of Robinhood, he has publicly advocated for Dogecoin. He likes Dogecoin. It's one of the, it was one of the first three cryptos that he actually allowed on his exchange. Number two, Mark Cuban, owner of the Dallas Mavericks, billionaire, Shark Tank extraordinaire, public figure, respected man. He publicly advocates for Dogecoin. He even says Dogecoin is better than Cardano, in his opinion. Whatever that means, right? What do billionaires know about money? Elon Musk, arguably the most popular person in the world, or infamous, however you want to look at him, he also publicly advocates for Dogecoin. He might be the guy that put Dogecoin on the map. Who knows? you got three billionaires. So first off, it's decentralized. Second off, you've got three billionaires that publicly advocate, and they're not just billionaires, they're public figures that publicly advocate for Dogecoin. Tell me another crypto besides Bitcoin or Ethereum, the top two. Tell me another crypto that has that going for them. I, I can't think of a single one. I'm not saying that there's other cryptos that billionaires aren't invested in or interested in. I'm sure there are. But publicly advocating for them, publicly talking about it, putting their name on the line for it, there's only one other one besides Bitcoin and Ethereum, and that's Dogecoin, undeniably. No other crypto with all their promises, all their developers, all their future economic implements being designed, whatever, none of them have that going for them. But Dogecoin does, and it's decentralized. That's two things. The third thing is, the third thing is, it has been around for a very long time. It's an OG coin. It's proven. It's proven to be safe. It's never been hacked. It's safe. And that's something that's very important in this crypto industry. It's never been shut down. It's never been... You know, it's never it's never had any faulty issues going on with it ever. What other crypto that's been in the top hundred for as long as Dogecoin has been in has not had issues? I can't think of one. Bitcoin's even had issues. Ethereum has had issues, but Dogecoin's just running, man. It's just doing its thing. We go if we go, uh, and you know, I'm just I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm gonna leave it at that. If we look at uh, at this website here, CryptoFees.info. At the very top, right, we're going to have Ethereum, of course. It's the most expensive. This is a website that tells you how expensive the fees are for transacting Ethereum, whatever, right? The, the most expensive cryptocurrencies to transact or what, what is making the most money on transactions or spending the most money, however you want to say it. Ethereum, Uniswap, Binance Smart Chain, Bitcoin, you know, blah, 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 blah. We scroll all the way down here. We get Dogecoin. Dogecoin is way lower. Dogecoin today, if we look at it, has seen $226 million in volume with $1,165 in fees. It's dramatically more efficient than even our top dogs. Dramatically more. And it's very secure. And it's very decentralized. And there are billionaires advocating for it. And it's an OG token that's been around and everybody knows about it. It's popular and infamous. People don't, people love to hate it. People love to love it. But everybody knows about it. And, and sometimes the things that we pay most attention to, like the things that we put all our money in and our heart into, Ethereum, 
or Bitcoin. They're not, they might do good, but they're not going to do as good as the thing that we're all aware of. But, but at the same time, like you're aware of it, but you're not paying any attention to everybody discounts Dogecoin. They all say that the last run was like a, a fluke. We're going to look into that. We're going to look into that. Um, I think that's all I got. That's my little rant to this intro. And uh, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I just want to put it in this in, in perspective like this. Okay. If if a carpenter is good with woodwork, uh, you know, uh, uh, an event planner is good at planning events. A pro athlete is good at sports. Um, a fisherman is good at catching fish. What do you think billionaires are good at or good with? Billionaires are good with money. They're probably good with money, right? Especially Elon Musk, Vlad Thurmer, and Mark Cuban. They're, those guys are probably good with money, right? They all advocate for Dogecoin. These guys who are experts at money to a certain degree, right? They, they, they've got billions of dollars. Maybe there's something to it, right? You listen to a carpenter on how, how to do woodwork. You listen to an engineer on how to do designs or like looking for flaws or whatever. I'm just saying, maybe listen to billionaires who are showing their interests, who are publicly advocating their interests. Maybe take that into consideration, guys. Maybe, maybe. All right. So enough, enough of the preaching. We're going to get into it right now. Um, I got Dogecoin brought up here. If I type in Doge USD, I go to Bittrex. I choose that because that's, from what I've been able to find, that's actually the longest, the most history um, on TradingView that Dogecoin has available to us. So I'm going to use that. Okay. I just want to jump to a point real quick that, that I made earlier. Um, and this will not be good for volume actually. So I'm going to, I'm going to delete the volume. We don't need it. There's no real need for it. Like it's Bittrex who uses Bittrex. Um, it's a shitty exchange. Anyways, <clears throat> they got a lot of cryptos, but I've, I've tried to get with Bittrex. Man, they're, they're just shitty, shitty customer service overall. Anyways, people said this was a fluke rally, right? Okay. Well, what about this rally over here? You know, maybe, maybe this start here, this was a fluke. Like, what about, like, look, look at the growth. Look at what's going on, right? We've got a high here. We've got a low here. We've got a higher high here. We've got a higher low here. We've got a higher high here. And I don't care if Dogecoin comes all the way down to one cent again. We've got another higher low. And it doesn't even have to go to one cent. Maybe it goes to three cents. Maybe it only goes to where it went now, like five cents, whatever. However you cut it, it's another higher low. When you have this kind of structure, higher, a high, low, higher, high, higher, low, higher, high, you're probably going to expect a higher low. And then after that, it's not, it's not a hard conclusion or assumption to make that we might get a higher high. Even if we get a lower high, I mean, where would that be? That could be 20 cents. That could be 50 cents. We could get a double top, whatever. Mind you that even at 20 cents, if Doge goes lower, which I do think it goes lower, but let's just say it doesn't go lower. Let's say that this is the current price that you can buy at the lowest, and it's just going up from here. Even at 20 cents, even at 20 cents, that's a 227% increase. If we go to all-time highs, that's a that's over a 10x. That's over a 1,000% gain increase right there. So re really, it's an overall uh, that would be an 11x. A 10x technically on this would be a 900% gain because you start with 100% already. So like when you 2x it, it's at 100%, right? If that makes sense. Basically, like a 20x would be 1,900, right? A, a 10x is 9,000. What whatever. Um, if that makes sense. Anyways, anyways, I just got to delete this. Okay, so in my opinion, it's 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 got potential to the upside still. I do think it's going down. I do think it's going to go down. I actually think Dogecoin's probably going to go around three cents, but we'll, we'll see if it gets there. But I want to pull up some things that I talked about before. So if we measure from the top, the very first top here on this chart, at least to the bottom, to the all time low, we can see the Dogecoin broke above its 100 level here, came back down, found support directly off the 618. This is cool. That's really cool. And then it bounces all the way up to the 1618 extension. Finds resistance there, tops off, and we go into another bear market here. Okay, let's let's move this. Let's let's see let's see what this does. So remember, it broke the one six one eight. It barely, barely. It basically tipped off it, but it broke through it just a little bit. So from that high to the next low, 
<clears throat> again, we broke through the 100 level. <clears throat> we found resistance at the 1618 again, found support on the 1272, and we actually went all the way up to the 2272. That's pretty cool. That's incredible. That was a massive rally. Can't deny it. Um, but what's really cool about that is it broke through the 1618 again, two times, right? I think even if we were to take like this high right here to this low, yeah, broke through. It went to the 2272 to find resistance right here. You know, arguably this, because that's, you know, if you wanted to find an extension, a little like slingshot, this was the windup that sent us up to here. You know, this was what took us to the low and sent us up to here. <coughs> but our first high, that first peak, was actually right at the 2272. We came back down to the 1272. And then we went all the way above, you know, whatever. That that, you know. But I'm just saying it's kind of kind of interesting that on all these peaks, all this peak, this peak, this peak, on all their relative fib extensions, they have broken through the 1618 at a very at a bare minimum, broken through a 1618. So I, just, I want to see something real quick. There's the yeah the one two seven two. By the way, let's just let's just imagine for a second. Maybe I mean just because you know this this is my first time actually seeing this. I, I didn't do this before, so this is you know we're, we're diving into the waters together here. If if this part of the rally here, if we can compare it to like this one, I'm not saying that we're going to get another leg up like this. I, I think that that um, has been invalidated because of how long this bear market is right now. Um, but we did go. All the way up to the 2272. We even found support on the 1618, but we went below it. The bottom was at the 1272. So if we draw from the top here to the bottom here, you know, we 2272, we kind of found support around the 1618, but not on it. You know, we did find resistance on it. It looks like we tipped it. We, we haven't hit the 1272, and that's at 3.8 cents. Could we find support there? which is also where we closed and opened these two candles here. And if we go on the weekly, I'm just curious. I'm curious to see, actually. The 1272, remember, it's this line right here. The 1272, I mean, it's close to where this wick was. It's right at the open and the close on the weekly level there, too. Same thing as the as the daily or the monthly. Let's go on the daily. Let's just see. I want to I wanna see if there's relevance to this line. I mean, not really, not what I'm looking for, not on the daily, not really. Looks like it was a little bit of resistance, but not not really. The 227, or the, the 1414, the 1618 even looks more prominent. Anyways, anyways, just, just checking on things, trying to get, you know, something figured out. Nothing really got figured out there, that's okay. Um, the 1272 could be a level of support. We could find support down around 3.8 cents. I do think Doge is going to go lower, but inevitably, remember... We broke through the 1618 both times. I mean, really, all three peaks that, that Doge has had in its history, its entire history, once, twice, three times, the relevant FIB extensions broke through the 1618 at least every single time. So if we took this from the top here to the current low, and we look at where the 1618 is, that's all the way up here at $3.94. All the way at $3.94, okay? Now, that might seem insane it's kind of insane might seem crazy i've done the math that puts dogecoin around like a under 600 billion dollar market cap i mean we could do we could do the math right now but i'm not i'm not going to i've done the math a few times i think around three dollars and 19 cents three dollars and 20 cents that's where doge hits 500 billion dollar market cap so adding another 70 cents to that it would be i don't think that'd be quite another hundred billion Maybe it would be, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not going to do the math right now, but, but it's, you know, probably around $600 billion is what I'm going to just rough estimation. Um, is a $600 billion market cap achievable? Yes. Oh, definitely. Yes. Um, it definitely is. Let's just see what Ethereum's market cap was. Let's see. Market cap max. Ethereum actually went all the way up to a $571 billion market cap. Bitcoin itself is at $367 billion right now, but it had a trillion dollar market cap at one point. Is it possible that Doge could have a market cap over $500 billion? Yes, yes. As unlikely as it might seem, it is possible. Now, let's be pessimistic. Let's be maybe even realistic. 
Um, cause right here, you know, we're at five, just below six cents. Three dollars and ninety-four cents is a ways away, guys. That's that's a ways away. But but just humor me here. What if we don't break the one six one eight? What if this is the first time out of all like three major peaks that Doge's had in its history? What if this fourth one doesn't quite break the one six one eight? What if it only breaks the one two seven two? What if it only breaks the one two seven two? I mean, we already know what's going to happen if it breaks or if it double tops, right? You're going to have a ten x already. But if it goes to the one two seven two, you could have a twenty five x. It says 2400 remember you have that extra 100% that you start with already so that's a, that's a 25x if it went to the 1618 you'd have a 62x from the current price 63x i mean that's insane that's insane guys anywhere from a 25 to a 63x that's that's very crazy is it likely is it possible yes and yes i think so i honestly do think so if if what would be conclusive or or at least provide more evidence that we're going to see this would be if we get above this line here this orange line the one the, the just the regular golden uh fib retracement the 618 the golden ratio if we can get above this it's off to the races and we can we've seen it before we've seen it before right this past one here we draw from the top gotta get the top the come here now the top to the bottom right we found resistance on it here, but we didn't find the bottom yet. So this doesn't really count. It's nice when you see it line up before. It doesn't have to, but that's kind of nice. You can see here, we blasted through the 618. We came back and tested it as support. That is um, textbook. That's what you want to see when you're looking for these extension levels. You see it break through the 618 like butter. Comes back down and tests it for support. That is very suggestive that you're going to see at least the 1272, if not, honestly, more likely the 618. And we did. We did. In fact, we even went higher. Um, again, like over here, you know, this little peak here, the pre-peak. Oh, damn it. Come on now. My mouse, man. I need to get a regular mouse. The 618's right here. And we broke through it like butter and went all the way up to the 1618, went through it. The 1272 went through it. That's classic behavior. Whenever it, not that it's disrespecting the 618, but whenever it's not providing resistance, whenever we can get above it, especially on the first pass, that is a signal that we should be looking for these extensions. It's a signal, guys. Um, even if we don't break it on the first pass, you know, it, might, it makes it a little less likely that we'll see the 618, but we still can. What you really want to see is support on it or just, ignoring it to suggest that we're going up here that's that's a very uh textbook kind of thing and then if we go all the way over here from the very beginning one the 618 is right here we didn't really find resistance we kind of came up and we didn't really test it we, we sold off a little bit before and really what we did was break up through it we closed the week we wicked below it and found it as support and we went we went all the way up we didn't go to the 1272 or the 1618 yet but what did we do we found support directly on the 618, which just confirmed exactly what I've been saying this whole time. We're going to the 1272 or the 1618, guys. That's, it's inevitable. So, so my point in bringing all that up again is that if we can break through this 26 cent level, if we can break through, and you know, honestly, I do think Doge is going to go lower. But if we can break this 26 cent level, it, if, if it goes lower, it's going to adjust the price. We break through it like butter. If we can come back and test it as support, we don't need to test it as support, but it would be nice to. If we can break above it, come back and test it as support, it is very likely, guys, very likely, that we're going to see at least $1.54, if not $3.94. And I don't care how unlikely it might seem right now. It's just it's just TA, man. It's just what the charts are telling you. And if you look, if we measure, if we take that line there, we go up here. I mean, this line up here would touch, I mean, heh, November 2022. I doubt that's going to happen. But, uh, I mean, let's see. Maybe we can tighten it up. Ah, it's pretty close, guys. It's pretty close. I don't know. Let's see. Let's get it like that. Maybe we could do the daily close. Who knows? I don't know. That would be, in 2023, that doesn't really line up with anything, um, which is okay. You know, I think a lot of people might be looking at this trend line, and maybe we hit this 1618 sometime in 2025 or 2024. 
and we're people are like, oh, we're gonna go all the way up here to this line, you know, and it's just it's not gonna happen. I don't know. Maybe not. I don't know. I'm gonna take this line away. Ignore what I was just saying. Um, it might not be relevant at all anymore. Um, but what is relevant is this one two seven two and the one six one eight. Now, if we go lower than this low, those one two seven twos and one six one eights only go higher. If we do indeed go to three point eight cents which we were talking about earlier, right? It's that 1272 level. If we go to this level, the 1618 is now at $1.64. It's now at 455 for the 1618. 1272, 1618, they go up. If we go even lower, let's say that we go all the way to where this wick was here. And in fact, I wanna pull it up. I, do, I would like to pull it up on the daily. Um, um, one second, one second, please. Just one second. <sighs> All right. Thanks for bearing with me, guys. I got a uh, six-month-old beautiful baby girl, and she was by the litter box. We can't have that. Okay, so, yeah, you. You want these? You want this? Maybe you do. Maybe you do. <laughs> Anywho, oh man, she's adorable. I'm not gonna show her though because I'm not about that. I don't know. Yeah, I'm. I'm no offense, guys. I'm just not about that. Um, so let's say let's go all the way over. I remember where I was at. So on the daily here, I'm gonna draw a couple lines. Clearly, we've got this wake down here. We've got this closing body here, and. Then just for shits and giggles, we've got this kind of resistance area up here where we closed, you know. So let's say, now let's let's go back out to the weekly. Um, so if we put this line at the first one, 1272 is at 167, the 1618 is at 473. If we go to the next one, the 1272 is at $1.80. The 1618 is at 559. Getting ridiculous. I mean, it was ridiculous at 340 or 360, whatever. It's getting more ridiculous. And let's say we went all the way down. I doubt we go the slope. Let's say we went all the way down to two dollars or two two cents point two. Two point two cents. One two seven two is at one ninety one. And the one six one eight is all the way up at six forty one. Those are some huge numbers, man. Huge numbers. Could it reach that? Well, if we measure from the last cycle low to the current high, is there anything that lines up in this area? And there's one level that seems, you know, relevant. It's kind of in this zone. And that would be the 0.5. If you know me, if you've watched my shows before, you'll know that the 0.5 on the Fib scale is actually very significant. It's a very significant level. I'm going to I'm going to just say and you know, let's say Let's just say that maybe these yellow lines aren't significant. Maybe this one is. Maybe that yellow line is the only significant one. <clears throat> maybe we close at it, but we come down and wick and bounce off of this 0.5 level right above three cents. And that's also not just right above three cents. That is right at, right at this wick, right at the bottom of this wick over here. Okay. If we bounce off the 0.5, if we find support there, Anytime you either find support or resistance at the 0.5 on this Fibonacci level, it's not a common thing to happen. But when it does happen, if you find significance on the 0.5, you find significant moves afterwards. So just like Ethereum, for example, ETH, let's, let's go to ETH. We'll come right back to this in just a second. Don't, don't get your panties in a wad. If we go from top all time high to the most recent low in ETH, come here, you went all the way up to the 0.5, found resistance on it. It's not normal, it's not common, it's not uncommon, but it's not, it's not a normal level to find significance off of. But when you do, you get significant moves. It took weeks to get all the way up here. And then in the course of really like, like two big red candles, we came down more than half of that uptrend, which took one, two, three, four, five, six weeks to just march up. We took one big candle here, another big candle here, and we eliminated at least half of those gains, right? We're, we're finding significant, more significant moves to the downside than we did to the upside. 
that's because we found resistance at this 0.5. Um, there's other things I could show, but I'm not going to. We're talking about Dogecoin. But basically, further illuminating the point that this 0.5 level, if respected, we find significant moves off of. And if we find support on this level, if we can close at this yellow line, even if we don't close at this yellow line, and we close like somewhere around the 0.5, if we bounce off the 0.5, we're likely going to find significant moves to the upside. And Dogecoin, when it has significant moves, it looks like this. It looks like this. It looks like that. It looks like that even, or that. It has very significant moves, very good moves to catch gains on. And what's nice about Dogecoin too is most of the time when these big pumps happen, if you sell them, you know, it'll probably come back down. You can buy it cheaper. You know, if you sold halfway through this one, well, you missed the majority of the of the buck there. But, you know, if you sold at the top there, a, a lot of it came back. Even if you sold halfway through at the top here, you, you basically got another chance to buy in. If we find support on this level, it's going to spell very good things for Dogecoin's future. And that's that's just the main point that I'm trying to deliver here. So <clears throat> with that, with that, the main point, let's look at the R size and stuff. You know, we're on the weekly here. Doge is below its 50 on the weekly. It found resistance on it. Same as Bitcoin, same as Ethereum. It's not a good thing. Um, we've actually never, I guess we've done that before. No, we've, we're, we're kind of at the lower points that it's ever been on here. Um, we have gone over here. I guess we have been that low. But uh, we could come a little lower, you know. This, this is kind of uncharted territory, so we could come a little lower, and that, that's okay um, on the weekly time frame. On the lower on the on the shorter term rsi the 10 rsi here we are kind of showing some bullish divergence oops i'm sorry guys I'm trying to get my bearings here i'm going to delete all these lines <clears throat> we've got this converging up while this is diverging down we've got bullish divergence forming and that's normally a good thing that's normally spells a pop we could get a pop up but at the same time if we really look into this a little bit more on the weekly scale what we have done is we've found resistance at this kind of area um, where we found support on before, confirming it as resistance, not good. We've also found resistance at the 40 area on the RSI, not good. That's the bearish control zone. If we go on the monthly, I don't know. Let me see if there's on the monthly. There's nothing on the monthly. Okay, not for that one. So on the monthly here, we are the lowest that we've ever been. Doge is showing the weakest price action it's ever had. Um, which is also not a good thing. We've even rejected the 40 level on the monthly. Not a good thing. Normally when you see rejection off the 40 levels, you like to see uh, the RSI come into the oversold zone or at least bounce off the oversold zone, but more likely go into it. Um, if the monthly was to go in the oversold zone, we would have to drop, I mean, if we dropped half, if we dropped 50% from here, that'd put us at right around three cents, which is what we were talking about a second ago. That could put us in the oversold zone or at least in that area and find a nice bounce. We don't have to. We didn't any other time, you know, this is the lowest that we've ever been. We don't have to, this is the monthly scale. It's a little bit different rules that we're playing with, but here we are on the daily. <clears throat> we can't get any strong reads on the R side. We haven't, we had a little blip of a strong read here for one day and it got washed out in the days to come. I mean, we, we haven't had strong reads in the R side since August. And really that was some weak ass price action. There's one more thing I want to go over before we're done with this. And let's just see here. Here we go. It's time frames. It's time frames. So, if you take from the top here, <clears throat> we're gonna measure two different ways. From the top here to the to the low point. That took us 485 days, roughly 16 months. Okay. From the next top to the next low. That took us basically 26 bars, basically 10 months more. 26 months, 790 days to go from the all-time high to the next low. Right now, from this all-time high to the current low, 396 days, that's the smallest amount of time it's taken. I don't think the low's in. I don't think it's in yet. If we go to the current month, that puts us at 518 days, still without the low though, right? We're not measuring over here, not where it's higher, which is where this is, we're measuring the low point. And the low point so far is that 13 bars, which is three months shorter than we've ever seen. I doubt we found the low. We could go all the way up to 26 months. We could even go longer than that. We could go shorter, 13, you know, 13 months in. That could have been the low. It's entirely possible. Who, who really knows? Time will tell. <clears throat> but 26 bars 
looks like this, July of 2023, which is interesting because in May of 2023, we're going to be a year out from the halving, the Bitcoin halving. We're going to be a year out. This is whenever the bull market traditionally kicks on, you know? So I would bet, I would bet that we are going to find a low in Doge within the next, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven months, maybe even six months, maybe even, maybe even three months. Who knows? It's going to happen soon. The next quarter or two, we will find a low in Doge and it will probably be around or at least below four cents and or, or around three cents. Um, anyways, that's from the top to the low point. Let's take the same idea. Let's measure from the top and measure to the next point as to when we broke the all time high. Not when we started turning up, right? Cause that was the bottom. That's what we just did from when we started turning up. No, no, no. We're going to measure where it broke its previous all time high. That wasn't this bar. That was this one, 40 months, 1216 days. That's what it took from one high to the next. Here is our next all-time high. We're not going to measure this because this, you know, this is all part of the same move, but, but that's what it took for it to break its previous all-time high. Here we are at this all-time high. It took to break its previous all-time high. It took a little less time, but still pretty close, four months away, <clears throat> 36 bars to break its all-time high. So let's say at a minimum, let's say, let's say we do the same thing that, that it did here. Let's say it goes four bars less, which I don't, I don't expect to happen, but let's say it happens. We have 36 minus four, that'd be 32 bars. So where's 32 bars? That's January of 2024, January, 2024. I'm going to put a vertical line there. And then let's say it takes four more bars than the 40. Let's go all the way up to the 44 level. Actually, let, let's first off go to the 40 level. Cause that, that was, you know, where where the longest one was that's the longest one in history but let's say we get an oddball and we get the longest the longest one now let's say it starts and maybe it's four months longer right maybe maybe it's longer than that maybe it's shorter than that i don't know i'm just making bs predictions here so really what we've got here is a time frame this isn't when doge is going to bottom this is when dogecoin is going to find its next all-time high it's all-time high right now is at 73, 73 cents, 73.9 cents. Some exchanges, it's 73.2, 73.8. Robinhood went up to 75.3. It's all-time high, though, for this chart is 73.9. Not talking about when we're turning up, but when we could see us breaking this price at the earliest, in my expectation, would be January 1st, or in the month of January, 2024. So nearly, nearly a year and two months away. Basically, the longest it could take is January of 2025. So basically, and then, and you know, here's the longest that we've seen so far. It's September of 2024. So it could be like a year, a little over a year and a half to two years. And I'm just going to say that we're going to delete this line, actually. And we're just going to say a year to two years is what we can expect. Again, to be clear, that's not whenever we're expecting Doge to turn up. We're expecting it to already be up by this time. We're expecting it, you know, maybe, maybe you come down a little bit, maybe we go to like three cents and then it has a massive ass rally and maybe it doesn't break it right there. Maybe, maybe we break it like somewhere in the middle. Who knows? That could happen. Maybe, maybe it takes a little bit longer and then it finally breaks it over there. You know, um, maybe it even takes longer than that. Maybe it takes less time and it just rockets straight up, you know? which we've seen, it's possible because it's happened before. Um, there's more money involved now, so it's a little less likely, but it is possible. But when it breaks its all time high, again, the main point that I started this with, when it breaks its all time high within the next year to two years, where's it gonna go? Where did it go before? It went to its 1618, it actually broke it. It went to its 1618 here, and it actually broke it. It went to the, the 2272, right? So what's gonna happen whenever we break this all-time high? Could we break the 1618 again? And if not, will we at least go to the 1272? Could we even go to the 2272? That would be ridiculous and insane, and I don't expect that to happen. I don't think we're gonna even touch. If we broke 
we broke five dollars, I'd be impressed. If I mean, if we if we break a dollar, I'm gonna be happy. But if we break, if we even get to that one six one eight, I would be I'd be a little impressed. But to be fair, I'm not I'm not creating a, an imaginary number here. I am I'm showing you what I'm kind of expecting to be the next top, kind of expecting slash am expecting. I I literally have been talking with friends with my family about how I do think Doge is going above three dollars this cycle. It's not impossible. And potentially even from what we've just seen, it's likely guys, it's likely. And if it doesn't happen, if for, for some reason we pull a fluke, we don't go to the 1618, we only go to the 1272. Well, if you buy at four cents, which we've, we've established is a likely thing, you know, to go at least below four cents, maybe even below five cents. Let's just say even actually that you buy right now at 5.9 cents and we only go to the two, the 1272. You 25 X your money. A thousand dollars becomes twenty five thousand dollars. Twenty five thousand dollars. I don't know what that would be. That uh, be five hundred thousand dollars. Should have been able to know that. Yeah, a hundred thousand dollars becomes two point five million dollars, and that's at the current prices. If we do go indeed to four cents or lower, you're looking at a thirty seven X to. I mean, if it really if it goes around three point one cents, which is where that fifty percent retracement line is if we go down there you're looking at a 48x nearly a 58x at in my opinion at a minimum at a minimum and let's say it shits the bed let's say we don't even get an extension let's say we actually find resistance on the 618 and we don't break above it well you're still getting a 728x if you catch the bottom if you buy it now you're still getting a 358 350x or not x sorry 350 percent gain before I said, uh, what was it? Before I said 728x, 728% gain is what I meant to say, I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> you're still gonna get good good returns, you know, on a meme coin, but is this likely? Are we going to form, you know, we're in a trend, we're in a very established macro trend to the upside. Are we gonna form a lower high? It's possible. All things come to an end eventually, but truthfully, when we have a higher high scenario, a higher low scenario, we don't fight that. We, we expect a higher high to come in. And the targets for that higher high, again, are in this magical zone up here. This very magical zone between a dollar and a half to nearly four dollars, guys. And again, it's not that the 1618 is the level. We actually break it every single time. Every single peak we've had, we've broken it. So we could, in fact, see prices above four dollars. Let's just do the math. I said I wasn't going to do the math, but let's fucking, let's just do it. You know what? We're going to do the math. <clears throat> let's look at Dogecoin. See what the market cap would be <clears throat> if we went to $4. Dogecoin went to $4. Right now, what's nice about Dogecoin too, it's very transparent. You know, you don't have to worry about how many coins are in circulation. You already know. Um, let's see here. Or it should. Maybe I don't know. Where is it? Oh, there we go. Circulating supply. Total supply is infinite. Okay. Like the dollar. But guess what? The dollar is more uh, inflationary than Dogecoin is. Eventually, because Dogecoin is set to, I forget how many billions a year, but eventually when there's like a trillion Dogecoins, that's going to be a very small inflation gain. Where the dollar, it's right now it's at 8%, you know, and over time it's 8% is, it increases. Where this is a fixed inflation. So technically it's inflationary at a deflationary rate. It's kind of unique. Um, but let's see. 136 billion billion coins 136 billion coins I'm gonna copy that we're gonna to go to just Google Calculator <clears throat> um, let's see Wow it won't let me do that okay whatever 136 578 986 136 578 I forgot it 986 986 and then 383, 383. So that's 136 billion, blah, 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 right? If we were to times that by $4, the, the potential next all-time high, times that by $4, that gives us a price or a market cap of, there's 100, there's 100,000, there's 100 million, and right there is 546 billion, which again, looking at ETH, looking at Bitcoin, 
it's an entirely possible market cap to achieve in the crypto world, especially for a decentralized asset that's more feasible as cash compared to any other crypto. It's been around for a long time, more than most cryptos out there. It's been around since before the ICO era, which is just great. OGs trade it, OGs like it. I forget if I said it, but I'll say it again. Billionaires advocate for it. Public figures advocate for it. And I mean, it's proven safe, man. It's proven safe. This is a whole video. This is a whole fucking 50 minutes to an hour. I don't know how long I've been making this thing. It's, it's, this is a whole video just explaining that this simple joke coin might be worth taking a look at, guys. It might be. And who knows if it has a future beyond the next cycle. I don't. I'm not thinking that far ahead. I'm just thinking about the next cycle. And off of what we've seen, it is not un it is not infeasible. It's not it's not even un improbable. I don't know. It's completely possible, is what I'm trying to say, to see these prices. And if you don't think so, that's okay. Don't buy it. But if this video convinced you at all that these prices are possible, maybe act on it. I'm not telling you what to do, but just maybe act on it. Don't worry about other people judging you. Make your own moves. Do what's right for you. Do what's right for your family. Do what's right for your money. Maybe if it's $100, whatever. $100, 25X at a minimum, right? That's $2,500. That's, dude, go on vacation, you know? Go to Vegas. Put it all in black and then double your money again. No, but don't do that. It's not financial advice. Um, if, and if, if you like this content, if you like the video, if, if you hear what I'm saying or you're starting to, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe. Um, I do make videos as often as I can. I'm a busy man. I, I could be busier, but, you know, I'm, I'm trying here, guys. And uh, I will make more Dogecoin videos, but I don't make them right now because there's not a whole lot going on. And until we start going down lower, you probably won't see me make another Dogecoin video. Until we break below this low, I'm not going to make another Dogecoin video because there's just not a whole lot going on. I can come on and tell you the same thing over and over and over again. And yes, it gets views and I love that. But this is just kind of a, not a warning, but, but just an alert for everybody who, who's looking to make some money. Dogecoin's not dead. It's not over. It saw the biggest rally it's had. It hasn't even given a whole lot of it back, man. I mean, it has. If we, if we measure from all-time high to its current low, it's given 93% of it back, but it's still up immensely. It's still anybody who bought um, before this candle, you're up with in, insane gains right now. And we have not seen the kind of red to the downside that we've seen green to the upside. To me, it's just the beginning, guys. We are in a macro uptrend. There's no denying it. Take your emotions out of it. You can hate Dogecoin all you want. I used to. But pull the veil out from over your eyes. Look at it for what it is. This shit's going places, y'all. Shit's going places. And it's got more going for it than basically any other cryptocurrency out there. Aside from maybe Bitcoin and Ethereum. But it might even have more going for it than Ethereum. I said it. Bitcoin, Bitcoin's Mac Daddy. I'm not going to say that, you know. And maybe and maybe Ethereum will always be reigning, you know, second place. That You know, that's totally possible too. Maybe Dogecoin flushes out in three years. But but at least for this next cycle, it's entirely possible that we see prices at around $1.50 to $4. And I just gave my whole spiel as to why that could happen. I hope everyone has a good day, a good night. Buy some Dogecoin, sell some Dogecoin, do whatever you want. This is not financial advice. I, you know, if, if you lose money in this shit, don't come to me crying. Just like if you make money in this shit, I'm not going to come to you asking for money. Do what's best for you. Make your own decisions. Do your own research. And I hope you all make a lot of money and get rich. That's, that's at the end of the day what I hope most. The next thing that I hope is that you all like and subscribe. That would be really sweet. Anywho, have a good day, everybody. Take care.